All right, let's start. So to begin, you're gonna need a skeletal mesh. I have this cool Freddy skeletal mesh. You need to make sure it's skeletal mesh. We're just gonna drag him out like so. You see Phantom Freddy FBX. Now this isn't completely necessary, but what I, what I like to do is create a scene, a dark scene, sort of, sort of dark box. Up here, change my selection mode into modeling. Create a box, just place that wherever. Click accept. I'm gonna go here in the poly edit, poly edit group. And then the very first, the top face, so like that. Then I'm gonna go in here, click extrude. And I'm going to drag my mouse down and just make a hollow empty box like that. Click accept. Then I can just resize this like so. And then here in the materials, I'm just gonna click black and search it for black flat. Yeah, pure, pure black flat. It's just gonna give you a flat ba black background. Okay, we're done with that. Now open your content drawer. Now I have the sequences folder, which I'm gonna make a new sequence. So right click here, create a cinematics level sequence. I'm gonna call this jump scare. Cool. Go in here and in here we open the sequence editor. Now this is just if you're familiar with video editing, you have your timeline here and here we have actors which we can add. We don't have anything at the moment, but we can add here using track actor to sequence and you can search up your Freddy. So mine is called Phantom Freddy FBX. You can see he's now in our little timeline. To actually animate our pose, we are going to right click here. Then go edit with FK control right here. I'm going to press reduce keys. That way we don't get a bunch of keyframes. And you can see now we are now in animation mode and we can see the bones here in our little model. We can also see the bone hierarchy here. So what bones are parented to which bones? We can select them individually. We can press W so we can move them around. So we can <laughs> move their finger around. Control Z to reset. We can press E to rotate bones. So for example, I go here and I click upper arm. I can rotate it. We can press R to scale. So I can scale like this, make him super buff like Popeye. Just control Z. Down here, we have our keyframes. Our keyframes, think of them as just a change in state or they represent some state. Now, in between keyframes, what the sequencer is gonna do is animate the change in state. So we have our initial keyframe. This represents our initial position. But if I move this here, by the way, I have this keyframe. This basically creates a keyframe anytime we make a change to our model. I'm gonna enable that. So what that does is if, for example, I select his upper arm, press E, I'm gonna rotate it up. You can see that automatically makes a keyframe for us. And what that's gonna do is it's going to smooth out the movement. You can see his arm is gonna raise up. Now, by default, we have this keyframe at the end, which is just the same as our initial one. So what's going to happen is from here, it's going to return to our initial position over this period of time. So naturally it's going to be slower. And if you want your movements to be faster, just make your keyframes closer to each other. So you can see here, it's going to be faster. Like that. Now let's say I want my arm to move starting from here. I don't want it to start moving as soon as it starts. What I can do is just go back to my initial keyframe, hold alt and then left drag. Like this that's could create a duplicate keyframe and what that's going to do is because these both are now the same keyframe there's no change so nothing's going to happen you can see nothing happens i can move this all day long but once i enter this you can see he's doing a suspicious movement but it's going to start from there and now he's going to raise his arm back up and he's going to bring his arm back down if i delete this for example you can press backspace delete you can see his arm is going to stay up from the very last keyframe and that's basically all there is to it. Get our camera after this. So right now we're just gonna model our actual sequence. So for example, I can go here. Actually, if I wanted my initial position to be something else, not him standing up, I'm gonna select the spine. You can also select here, right here, and you can see this as a bunch of children. Now, if you move the parent bone, you can see all the children move along with it. So uh, the upper arm, all these fingers, everything's going to move with it. I'm going to make him sort of bow down like this. And that's going to be my starting position. Eight frames after or seven frames after, I'm going to bring him back up like this. So this is what's, what's that's going to look like. 
it's gonna pop up like that like that and if you want to create keyframes for everything just click this add a new keyframe it's gonna create a keyframe for everything that way i can animate all my other movements I'm done. I created a thing I'm satisfied with. But you can see the sequence continues playing all the way until this red line. So what we can do is go to our last keyframe, in this case this one, and just drag the line back to it. Instead of reaching our potential, let's bring our potential back down to us. And we have a, this just uh, a fun little jump scare. Okay, once I'm done with that, I'm going to save that because I don't want to lose my progress. And now I'm going to add my camera component. So here in this camera icon, click this. That's going to add a new camera. And that's going to make us pilot the camera, aka take control of the camera. You can change the camera focal length. If you lessen that, it's going to make our image appear further away. Or you can zoom in. I like it at the default settings. So I'm just going to keep it at that. And to control our camera, it's the same as your standard UEFN controls. Hold right click, then you can press the WASD keys to move around. And press Q to go down. You can press E to move up. So I'm just going to position my camera maybe like this. I'm going to play that like this. Now, let's say I want him to get closer. I want him to get closer maybe to the camera. You can either make the camera get closer like so. Or you can make Freddy move. I'm going to do the Freddy one. Down here, we have our transform. So let's say I want him to start moving eh, at around this point. So I'm going to add a keyframe. Click to add a new keyframe. Get closer here. What I can do is I can go here into our transform. I can either... Click him, press W, and physically move him forward. As you can see, he gets closer. Or, if I delete this, click on Freddy. And then here in our transform, we can move him either left or right, up or down. I'm just going to position him here, or forwards and backwards. So I'm going to move him forwards. So I think this is a... Um, good enough animation so i'm gonna save and i'm gonna exit out of here now by default if you exit you're gonna still be piloting your camera exit out of the camera pilot mode just click this button here and that's gonna return you to your regular uefm now to actually play our sequence we need a cinematic sequence device go into your content drawer go to fortnite devices and grab your cinematic sequence device now in here select your sequence mine was our jump scare sequence you can also change the visibility to everybody or only the person who instigated or started the sequence i'm gonna leave it to everyone because i want everyone to be spooked now we need a trigger go into my content drawer i'm gonna grab my i'm gonna grab a trigger just bring up a trigger now go in here in my cinematic sequence in my play function i'm gonna add an element so i'm gonna add something that's gonna play in my cinematic sequence i'm gonna grab this eyedropper Click our trigger. Then in none, click on trigger. With that, let's actually test that out. We're going to launch session. Anyway, but Freddy is there. Hello, Freddy. If I go here, I'm going to prepare my socks because I... Okay. So we're going to add sound to this. That'll make this 10 times scarier. All right. So adding sound. Go back into your sequence. I'm sorry, so my jump scare. That sound, all you got to do is go into track and add an audio track then you can just add an audio and you can choose either a pre-made audio or one that you imprint set i'm just going to use a pre-made one maybe this one and i'm going to drag that here and, it's fine. and then we can save that sequence and then we're going to push changes anyway that's pretty much it i hope that was helpful and yeah